A few weeks ago, I covered the case of Scott and Amy Fandel, a brother and sister who went missing in the 1970s. I mentioned in that video how awful it was to have two children go missing at the same time. Any missing persons case is cause for concern, of course, but today's case involves the disappearance of not two, but three siblings. November 2021 will mark 70 years since this disappearance, and we still don't know what happened. Let's talk about the Klein brothers. Kenneth Thomas Klein Jr. was born on October 24th, 1943 to Kenneth and Betty Klein. He was also welcomed by older brother Gordon, who went by Gordy. On March 7th, 1945, Kenneth and Betty welcomed another son, David John Klein, followed by Daniel James Klein on August 17th, 1947. I didn't find much about the Klein brothers' early lives, but from the little I did find, their childhoods were relatively normal. They hung out with each other, played outside and roughhouse, just like many kids did at the time and many still do today. But on November 10th, 1951, all of that changed. That afternoon, a Saturday, eight-year-old Ken, six-year-old David, and four-year-old Danny wanted to go to the park. Their mom initially said no, but they kept begging until she finally said yes. Around 1.30 p.m., the brothers set out for Farview Park, less than half a mile from their home on Colfax Avenue in North Minneapolis. Their older brother, Gordy, who was nine at the time, was supposed to meet up with them later, but when he arrived at the park and went to the oak tree they usually met under, none of his brothers were there and he couldn't find them anywhere else in the park. Betty Klein called the police pretty quickly after this. She was initially told they couldn't do anything until the boys had been gone for 24 hours, which was apparently standard procedure at the time. However, they did end up sending a few officers into the neighborhood to look around and see if the boys turned up. They never did. Friends, family, and others quickly stepped in to help, searching alleys, talking to neighbors, and distributing missing persons posters. At first, police believed the boys could have run away, but that changed pretty quickly. The day after their disappearance, a group of hunters saw three boys matching the brothers' descriptions getting into a truck near Cambridge, Minnesota, about 43 miles north of Farview Park. The tip was investigated, but it turned out to not be the Klein brothers. The next day, two days into the investigation, a neighbor reported she had seen the boys sitting on a curb around 5.30 p.m. on the day they went missing. Bloodhounds traced the boys' scents from there to the nearby Mississippi River, where the trail stopped. The river was drained multiple times, but no bodies were ever found. The day after this, Tuesday, November 13th, Two stocking caps were found by a railroad worker close to a dam in the river. The caps were positively identified by Kenneth Klein Sr. as belonging to his sons. Five days after the boys' disappearance, the search for them was called off. Investigators believed they fell into the Mississippi River and drowned. They also believed the boys' bodies may have been buried in silt, a loose material made of extremely small rock particles. According to Tom Jones, who was the chief of police at the time, the point of the river where the boys' trail stopped was pretty swift, and if they had fallen in, it would have carried them away pretty fast. A few days later, the clients got a postcard. The handwriting was unusually elaborate, and the sender said they had the boys and would kill them on the 20th, which I believe was the next day, if they didn't get $15,000. The senders gave directions to meet them that night, pick up the kids, and hand over the money. Kenneth Sr., along with police and FBI agents, went to the scene that night. Police were prepared to make an arrest, but nobody ever showed up. I assume they considered this a hoax because the case was never reopened. As the years went by, Betty Klein said she still believed her sons were alive. She and her husband wrote to senators and the FBI hired a private investigator, and even consulted a psychic horse, which sounds kind of strange, but I have heard of things like this happening. 
When Ken, David, and Danny disappeared, Betty Klein was seven months pregnant with another boy, and she gave birth to their brother Mike not too long after this. The Kleins later had another son, Donald, and at least one other son, though one source said they had four more sons in total. At least one of the brothers has since died, along with both Betty and Kenneth Sr., but Donald Klein, as well as Gordon, their older brother who was just nine when they disappeared, are both still alive. Another thing the Kleins did is putting out ads about the boys' disappearance in newspapers for years. In 1997, Minneapolis-based writer Jack L. High came across one of these ads and contacted the Kleins. He has been following the case ever since. In 2019, he teamed up with PBS to produce the six-episode podcast Long Lost about the brothers' disappearance. El High also released a book about the case called The Lost Brothers that same year. I will leave links below to both the book and podcast if you would like to look into this case further. They both contain a lot of details I couldn't fit in here. As of 2019, there were two sheriff's deputies looking into the case independently and trying to convince the Minneapolis Police Department to reopen it. A box of evidence that had the boys' hats and some other clothes of theirs was given to the family after the case was closed, but it has since gone missing. So what happened to the Klein brothers? Did they really drown in the Mississippi River and their bodies were never recovered? The boys sent stopped at the river and two of their caps were found there. Anecdotally, from everything I've read and researching both this case and others like it, bodies not being recovered from water for years is actually pretty common. Their bodies could have just never surfaced or been found after being washed down the river, or they could have been buried under silt like the initial investigators believed. It might sound crazy for bodies to go unnoticed for seven decades, but things like this do happen. And the internet generally seems to agree. Speculation on places like WebSleuths and Reddit include several people who think one of the boys accidentally fell in the water and the other two jumped in to try and save him, but none of them could get back out. Several people in these threads say they'd do the same thing if one of their siblings was in the same situation. I don't have siblings myself, but I'd like to think I would too. But now let's talk about the other major theory in this case, that the brothers were kidnapped. In the early 2000s, the private investigator hired by the Kleins was told something by a dying woman who said she had to get it off her chest. According to her, on the day the boys disappeared, she saw them playing basketball with two neighborhood men who were rumored to be pedophiles. Upon hearing this, the private investigator wondered if they had been kidnapped. According to Jack L. High, kidnapping wasn't something a lot of people thought about at the time since it was so rare. This reminds me a little bit of the case of Stephen Damon, who was a two and a half year old boy who disappeared outside a store in New York in 1955. I covered his case in a full video, which I will leave up in the cards and down below if you want to look into it further. But kidnapping might have been on some people's minds pretty early on. According to the Long Lost podcast, the Klein's neighbors at the time were afraid after the boys' disappearance. One man who was interviewed was the same age as Danny, the youngest brother. After their disappearance, he said he wasn't allowed to go to Farview Park alone. The boy's older brother, Gordy, also doesn't believe they would have gone all the way to the river without him, a distance of between one and seven miles depending on the route they took. A few online speculators have said it would be difficult to kidnap three children at once, but others cited the case of the Beaumont children, three Australian siblings who had gone missing, possibly kidnapped, about 15 years after the Klein brothers. Like I mentioned earlier, two private detectives were working on the case as of 2019. On the Long Lost podcast, they said they had a list of people they considered suspects, but most of them were probably dead. Before we move on, I just want to clarify, this is all speculation. None of the men mentioned here or in the podcast have been arrested in connection with the Klein brothers' disappearance, and they are innocent until proven guilty. 
Ken, David, and Danny Klein were last seen in their neighborhood in Minneapolis, Minnesota on the afternoon of November 10th, 1951. Most of the people who have covered this case believe they are no longer alive. Kenneth Thomas Klein Jr. was 8 years old, 3 feet 7 inches tall, and 55 pounds. He had a mole and round birthmark on the front of his body and a scar on his forehead. He was last seen wearing a red jacket, yellow plaid shirt, jeans, overshoes, black mittens, and a red cap with black trim. If he were alive today, he would be 77 years old. David John Klein was 6 years old, 3 feet 6 inches tall, and 55 pounds. He had a scar on his thumb, another on the right side of his lip, and warts on both hands. He was last seen wearing a brown sheepskin coat, jeans, black shoes, mittens, and a red and gray cap. If he were alive today, he would be 76 years old. Daniel James Klein was 4 years old, 2 feet 11 inches tall, and between 35 and 40 pounds. He had a scar near his eyebrow and another on his forehead, possibly more than one. Different sources said different things. He was last seen wearing a red snowsuit, blue overalls, and a blue shirt, rubber boots, a brown plaid cap, and brown or red mittens. If he were alive today, he would be 73 years old. This case is currently closed, but as of 2019, two private detectives were attempting to gather evidence to get it reopened. If it ever is reopened, it will fall under the jurisdiction of the Minneapolis Police Department. So that is the case of the Klein brothers. Just about everyone I came across in my research, whether they thought the boys were kidnapped or not, don't expect to find them alive or for anyone to be convicted in relation to their disappearance. But with both of their parents and at least one sibling dead, the remaining family members just want to know what happened. If you found this video interesting or informative, be sure to like and share it. For more true crime, paranormal videos, and other general dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.